This is part one of a two-part interview with Bob Henderson. The interview was conducted on November 8, 2008 in Vancouver, Washington. Uh, my parents were not interested in the outdoors and or in the, the work that broadly we would call experiential education now. And uh, I was sent to a children's summer camp and thrived in that setting and worked as a young uh, camp counselor and uh, then travel guide. And the piece that really struck me uh, uh, in guiding these, uh, these long trips was that I became aware that while everybody, everybody's expectation was recreational, a sense of well-being, uh, I was seeing education and therapy. Why it was so easy for me to jump in and go, I go first, I was a camp kid, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. And, I, and I, I thrived in the setting. I didn't thrive in schooling. I failed a grade, you know, I, uh, stuff like that. I was a real non-school kid. Uh, and maybe that's why I thrived extra hard in camps, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, just said, well, I'm somehow staying with this. Mm -hmm. And it could have been to go into camp directing and administration, or it, it could have been, what, and while it sounds, but you teach at the university, what's that got to do with camps? Well, I, I was studying, um, what, uh, I was studying Canadian history, anthropology, literature, literature geography, those kinds of things with the intention. come to mind and they're very different things so I'm not I can't decide so I guess I don't have to judge I don't have no, to, you don't have to. <laughs> so Go for it. yeah well, it's yeah. a rare hey, so one would be very brief and um, I, I think the reward would be that there's a lot of I have one guy teaching at, at, in one program at a university not now two but it's not a program in other words I'm the only guy doing outdoor ed at this place and and it's the only outdoor ed in the university and yeah so it's very rewarding for me therefore to uh, to see my students from the 80s and the 90s and now this decade um, out there thriving and doing great work uh, and and I, I think I feel that my legacy, you know, so to speak, uh, but you know that that I'm pretty aware that the feeling that I have around that is that uh, I've got some amazing stu stu former students who are doing some great things in school boards, and and um, I'm really trying to keep track of them. They keep track of me, and it's just a great feel-good experience. So, so that's my that's my reward. And professionally, I have one reward that is um, came to mind, so it must be a reward. All right. <laughs> it's uh, and what you know once. Um, there was, a, there was an attempt to kill all the outdoor ed in my program. We, wow. Not kill me, but kill okay. everything that was outdoors, <laughs> all right. which would have killed me. And basically they wanted me to be an indoor educator because I could teach 300 students in a classroom mm -hmm. and not take uh, 40 students on a nine-day canoe trip in September and, mm -hmm. six, mm -hmm. uh, and, and a six-day winter trip for, uh, for 15. Yeah, all the usual weird things. Mm. And so, you know, it was get this guy in the classroom doing anything because it's just not economically strong to have him. And I uh, went into this curriculum meeting thinking, well, I'll just explain to them why this is important for me to do these outdoor ed trips and they'll, they'll surely understand and I'll, I'll be successful in my... And I, I, I was sort of going slower and lower and lower in my chair realizing, oh, I'm going to lose. They, they, there's just no way. It's not. It really isn't about me having an opinion in this, and I can't win the economic argument, and I can't win the efficiency argument. Really, one and the same. So uh, I was floundering, and I was losing, and I was about to, you know, realize this is I'm going down here, you know. Yeah. And then I, 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 I had this moment where I went, wait a minute, I haven't been honest. I'm honest with my students. Why wouldn't I be honest with these other folks? So I said, listen, give me another week. Let me get. The, my research together. Let me come back. Let me bring in some students. Let me gather up the student work with the, the journal work, and let me go through my evaluations and put it in an organized structure. And 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 let me also talk spirit about spiritual mm. reasons and how it would kill me to the core as a, as a spiritual being. And let me draw on the spiritual qualities that that I think are present and the holistic education qualities that are completely different from the courses you guys are teaching. Nothing wrong with what you're doing, but I'm teaching a different set of skill yeah. sets here yeah. and let's get together and do that and at the end of that if you want to get rid of this outdoor ed stuff you know I guess we have to talk on another you know, again and uh, no one ever 
called me for that meeting. No one has ever challenged me since. <laughs> Is that I, right? No one even no one even talks to me now. No, <laughs> I'm exaggerating, yeah. but only a little bit. Yeah. No, and you know, <laughs> a, 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 my take on that is, um, I don't think they just wanted to get involved. They didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to talk right. to me about that. So they just decided to leave you alone. Yeah. I was the he's great. Judged. Oh my gosh, he's the guy. He's he's yeah. out there. He's, yeah. Yeah. he's yeah. unusual. It's yeah. we don't want to go to those places. We don't want to listen to him <laughs> defend himself. We yeah. want to make him do. Well, and, not only and, that, then I don't have to yeah. defend myself. Either. Yeah, it, yeah. The bio, the burden of proof was always on me, and I was yeah. going to shift it on them. Yeah. And I think they just said, you know, he's not worth the trouble. When it comes right down to it, let him do it. Yeah. Wow. And I've not been bothered by it. And good on them. Maybe they just, maybe they, yeah, I could have made some of this up. They could have gone, gee, you know, we accept it. And, you know, they, they could be completely above board. But I don't know. My yeah. take on it is, is they went, leave the guy alone. It's not worth our <laughs> yeah. trouble. Yeah. And, and I take that as a reward. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, I've been able to pass that on to a lot of people, and, and I think the, the lesson in that that I try to pass on is be honest. Don't tell them what, you know, don't compromise, if you will, but tell them, go to the actual real reason why you can't, you know. So it's been a big lesson for me, and it's a moment of reward. I look back on it, and I'm, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of proud of that experience. And it's not like I, I came to it by chance, not by some great moment of wisdom or, you know, it just was, wait a minute, I'm losing this. I, yeah. Anyway, end of story, it just, it's, it's a reward for me. Yeah. Wow, that's powerful. Hi, I'm, on one level, I, I was just sharing in the elevator coming up, someone was talking about the whole address and, you know, sharing stories and, but anyway, and so it was in my head because I told the story just a minute ago. We have in Canada something called McLean's Magazine. It's like Newsweek or yeah. the Time in a way for us. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, yeah, about seven or eight years ago, a fellow called, called oh, and what it does is it, it, the one issue a year rates all the universities in Canada on a wide variety of scales. So uh, and then you know one, two, three, four. It's ridiculous because you know you can't really do that kind of thing. But they do, and of course parents read it who are sending their kids to schools and. If, if the first initial years, anyway, it was a, it was a very, very big deal, big major thing, and you didn't want to score badly in an overall capacity. But there were so many things that you you were ranked in. You could be good at something and bad at something else. You get a middle overall rating, and uh, you know it should never have happened. U.S. News does the same thing here. Do they? Yeah. Okay. So out of the blue, I got this um, guy coming over and saying, uh, you know, I, I got to tell you, I want to be the first to tell you because I'm a friend. You. And, and uh, you know, you're in McLean's magazine. And my first thought was, oh, I do great work. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. it's going to be something yeah. great. Yeah. I'm thrilled, you know. And it was, you know, uh, f uh, Bob's 4D03 outdoor education course, biggest bird course on campus. Oh. Mm. Now, you know, I can, I, I can live with it. But, but no one ever talked to me. Mm. No, I, mm -hmm. Where did it come from? Mm -hmm. It was outdoor ed. Students do well. And we go on a nine-day canoe trip. It's a little sad. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of people oh. saw that. And it was like, well, I can't talk to all those lot of people. So it was too bad. There was an impression that was already out there. Once it's said, yeah. it's said, it's done. Yeah. And, and you just live with it. And, and you just can't worry about that stuff. Right. But right. Um, however something you said made me uh, you know, click into it, there is, you, just, you know, you have to let that that you have to not worry about that stuff or you wouldn't do things. That's right. One of the most profound classes I have is a walk in the woods. Yes. We teach, quote, eco-psychology. Yes. We used to do it with a fishbowl activity where we pretend, few of us pretended to be psych clinical psychologists and we're using nature therapy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it was in class. Yeah. And, and great, Liz Newbery, bless her heart, said, you know, why don't we just take him for a walk? And, yeah. I, and I, my answer, honestly, was because, Liz, if we take them for a walk, uh, that's too hokey. It'll get around that we're just going for a walk. Because she just wanted to go for a walk mm -hmm. with 50 people. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyone you know, went home and paused and thought about it. Wait a minute, she's right. We can do eco-psychology if we go for a walk. Anyway, we, we came up with a great little collection of activities that mostly were just based on going for a walk. We have a campfire in the middle. Um, we tell stories about connections to animals. People share stories. People feel really good about it. We do a little mini solos. It's all in two yeah. hours. Yeah. If they have to go back to class, we right. say, oh, you better get back to class. Yes. Yeah, they, or we, you can, or, but if you don't have to get back to class, stay in the woods. Yeah. Yeah. And I had an email from a student that night that said, uh, you know, I, you would never know, Bob, but I have an anxiety sleeping.